And so let me show you my face. Let me show you myself. I have a new hat. I hope you like it. Uh, it's very bright just to add some colors in your life. So my name is Tanya. I'm a professional tour guide from Moscow. I've been working as a tour guide for nearly seven years and I do all types of tours. I, I show the highlights of the city, the main attractions such as the Kremlin, the Moscow Metro, Red Square. So if you're interested, you can always join my tours. Highlights of Moscow Part 1, Highlights of Moscow Part 2, the best of Moscow and many other great tours. I also show hidden gems and on my tours I talk about Russian history, Russian culture, Russian mentality, Russian literature and more. So if you are interested in my tours you can always go to my Hego page and I believe I have approximately 40 tours these days. So we are approaching the museum park. So this is a special tour. I'm happy that many of you were able to make it. Before we will start the tour, I'm going to tell you uh, about the plan and then everything starts. I will also scroll your messages. I hope I will not miss anything before the tour starts. So the most popular question on any way go tour, what's the temperature like? What's the, what time is it? So it's, seven, it's 6 p.m. So it's already dark, but it is the best time to do this tour because when we will approach uh, the ice statues, and you can already see it from here, uh, they are all lit, which means that be prepared for some amazing postcards. And I know that some of you are like professionals in postcards. Uh, so let me go through uh, the comments uh, from the beginning of the tour and I will tell you about the tour. So, oh, Nicola Budapest, welcome, welcome. Happy to see you on my tour. Christian, thank you very much. Happy to see you on my tour. Hello, Sam Heather, thank you very much for your contribution right in the beginning of the tour. Highly, highly appreciated, especially for special tours. As many of you know, I mean, probably I won't be able to repeat this tour and I'm going to, oh my God, yeah. What it's called, the gimbal, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's going a little bit crazy. Yeah, it's, oh my God, it's dancing now. Okay, I will restart, oh my God. Okay, I will restart the gimbal. And uh, if not, I will just have to hold the phone in my hands. Uh, just apologies. It happens, it just happens because of the weather conditions, because of the wind and everything, it's very sensitive. So I'll, do my best just a second oh my god whatever you know and it always happens on the tours like on some kind of like either it's a special tour or uh it's either a tour where you have many participants but let's hope for the best in any case uh you know i had yeah it's um, yeah so okay let's hope it will be fine uh till the end of the tour hello linda hello everyone so yeah that's why again your contributions are very important because we have to invest in the gimbals and the equipment and that's how actually the project the hago project makes sustainable uh new tour uh must be okay scene of russia in winter we're gorgeous okay thank you thank you everyone uh thank you samantha thank you everyone okay so let me uh tell you about the plan so we are in museum park this is uh, the entrance to Museum Park. I have a tour about Museum Park. It is known as the Park of Fallen Statues. Why Fallen Statues? Because in this park, we have approximately 600 statues. It really depends on the year because some statues are in museums, but many of them are statues from the Soviet Union that were torn down and if you are interested in the Soviet past, uh, you can join this museum park tour. But today we are here for the festival and it's called uh, Snow and Ice. Uh, last year, I think it was called in English, uh, Ice and Snow. These days you won't find any information in English unless it's my tour. I really tried to find any information. Uh, unfortunately, there was nothing for the obvious reasons. I mean, since 
uh, Russia is kind of isolated and we don't have any foreigners coming to the city. But, uh, but I'll do my best uh, to show you this festival and I hope you will enjoy it because this is certainly uh, a unique moment, a unique festival. And in general, the place is uh, beautifully decorated. The area is beautifully decorated. As I've already said, hello, Diane, hello, Jane, everyone. So we are uh, close to Gorky Park and look at the entrance. The entrance is uh, also spectacular. It reminds of a triumphal arch. Uh, it's also beautifully decorated. So that's why I do tours. Maybe I will do one more special just to show you this uh, festive atmosphere, this uh, beautiful decorations for uh, Gorky Park. Uh, and again, Museum Park is on the opposite side. It was opened in 1992, so only 30 years ago. Here is again the Ice and Snow Festival in Moscow. That is what's written in Russian. So in the festival, we will see ice and snow figures. This year, they are more like um, ice statues. Uh, but let's start with the one that is made out of snow, and it's the rabbit from Alice in Wonderland. And uh, this year, we have more focus on Russian culture, on Russian traditions in terms of like, you know, the themes of the festival. So the rabbit kind of like stands out. It's really special. Um, you know, today we have many people uh, in this festival, so I'll do my best, you know, just to <laughs> have some good postcards for you. But again, yeah, be prepared uh, for the crowds. And let me tell you about the festival and actually how I tried to do it uh, the first time. So the festival was opened, uh, this one, at the end of December on December 28, and can you believe, can you imagine, it was closed just uh, after three days. Why? Weather conditions. Well, you can imagine what it takes to have these statues. And Russia um, in Moscow, well, is known for uh, cold weather, but uh, we had days when it was like plus five. So it was very, warm for these statues. Uh, therefore, when I came here the last time, and you know, um, I had to plan this festival like two weeks in advance just to have a bigger audience. And then we came and many uh, statues were covered. So wasn't able like to show everything and things that we were able to see uh, were still not that impressive as what I am able to show you now. And what is also uh, important to say is that it may be the last time. So I'm sending you a picture of Lama Nosov. That is the man what we have in here. Uh, in, in the festival, we have several areas. So the first one that I'm showing you is the area devoted to great Russians, to famous Russians, like some of the best known Russians in history. So Lama Nosov, Mikhail Lama Nosov, or Michael Lama Nosov, as you would say, <clears throat> Uh, in English. He was uh, the founder of the first university in Moscow, in Russia. He <clears throat> he was, uh, I, I usually say, the first self-made man of his time because he wasn't from the family of rich Russians and is in many other countries. Like, um, you often have this um, divisions in the society that it was very difficult you know to become successful Lomandas, if you can hear it uh if you're not from them but he had a dream to open the university and he was the man uh, who was uh, well known not only uh thanks to the university but he was also a writer he was a scientist so truly a genius of uh, his time do you know how they uh, create these sculptures actually last uh, time when I was here, we were able to see the process, how they were creating these uh, sculptures. What I can say that the average, uh, it takes uh, 12 hours to create uh, the statue. Do you recognize the man? By the way, we can play the game. <laughs> so I will have some time uh, to answer your questions in the chat. Um, so basically they are carving ice, obviously. And last year, last year the festival was a little bit different because uh, 
it was more interactive all of these days we still have a scene i'm going to show you like it's called the creative area where you are able to create your own masterpiece or not really a masterpiece but something um yeah so last year i mean it was possible actually to visit uh, the, the, the festival and to see the process. This year, uh, they're supposed to have like master classes and lectures uh, from uh, the experts. So, any ideas about the man? That Astronaut, is. cosmonaut, really close. Yuri Gagarin, again, the greatest man in Russian history. Sam, congratulations, we have the winner. And here is a picture of also Yuri Gagarin, the first man in space. Uh, and most of the Russians actually know the date, uh, the 12th, uh, April 12th, 1961. And it's written at the top, let's go, because that was the phrase that he said before his flight. He was a very charismatic man. And, you know, even Elizabeth, uh, the Queen Elizabeth II appreciated him. Uh, it was a kind of like a known fact in uh, the Soviet Union that she didn't really appreciate uh, Khrushchev, but she was charmed uh, by uh, Gagarin. It's interesting that he was kind of an icon for many women, many dreamed about, uh, many ladies in the 60s dreamed about marrying Yuri Gagarin. But guess what? He was a pretty short guy, like you, you can't be tall to fit in into the capsule. So I've just checked today. The height, I just remembered that he was shot. So it was like, I'm, I'm going to say it in meters, sorry, it's just uh, the system that we use in Russia. So it was 158. It's really short for Russia and especially for men. I am 167. So yeah, so that was the, 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 the way it was. God, there are two. Okay. So uh, that is uh, the early about like big uh, personalities in Russia. And here is the next man. The next man is Peter the Great. And Peter the Great is usually associated, here is Peter the Great. Peter the Great is usually associated with uh, St. Petersburg. And actually this is the reference to the statue um, in uh, St. Petersburg. Uh, but you know, since he's one of the main Russian rulers, the rulers of Russia, he's still here. We have him. So here we go. Uh, 55. Yeah, in, in any case, I mean, uh, many leaders, by the way, in the Soviet Union, they were uh, shot. But it's just interesting that, um, you know, when we were talking about the cosmonauts, how they were choosing, uh, Gagarin was chosen also for his charisma. He was really charming because it was also the person who would travel around the world, the person to promote. Do you recognize this man? Uh, Pushkin, Alexander Pushkin. So I don't have a picture of every person, but I keep talking about Pushkin, I think, on most of my tours because he's the number one writer in uh, Russia. So often I say that he's like a Russian Shakespeare, or you can say Victor Hugo for France. It's Victor Hugo, the number one writer. So even though we have some other big names like Tolstoy, uh, Dostoevsky, who would be better known than Alexander Pushkin, he's still the number one. He was the first professional writer. He wrote stories for children. And here we have some reference to Russian fairy tales. This is something also that we will be able to see in this festival, many references. Uh, to fairy tales. There is a cat also from, it's called why, why, the wise cat from the fairy tales, the wise cat. So if you want to learn more about uh, Russian literature, uh, Alexander Pushkin is, uh, could be the one uh, to read. Um, James, and don't forget my favorite, of course, Gogan. So I, uh, James, I know that James always supports me uh, on many of my tours, but especially literature tours. Uh, so yeah, I mean, here, I mean, again, we you see we have so many statues. So there is um, the focus on the biggest names. They didn't include Gogol. Uh, it's also a little bit controversial these days to include the writer of uh, Ukrainian origin. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's obvious that we have so many names, uh, so many names in Russian culture. You know, last year it was easier because we had names. Uh, but these days, 
uh, you really need a guide uh, to just uh, to navigate through. Do you recognize them? It is the reference to uh, Tolstoy, Leo Tolstoy, Anna Karenina, and it's actually written in here, Tolstoy. Anna Karenina, it's Anna and Vronsky. There were many, many uh, great movies, uh, not only in Russia, but also in Hollywood. Many famous actresses uh, played uh, Anna Karenina. So it's another great book, you know, to read if you want to understand Russia, if you want to learn more about Russian cu culture. And Tolstoy was certainly one of the biggest writers. I mean, he's uh, very well known around the world. And I keep um, talking uh, about Tol Tolstoy these days because he was also um, the main pacifist in Russian culture. And some of his quotes, they're very important and very meaningful, especially uh, during these days. So I will just share with you one if you don't mind. Um, and actually, I have one that is from uh, Anna, uh, Anna Karenina. Happy families are all alike. Every unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. He was a wise man. So uh, if you need wisdom, um, I personally recommend Tolstoy. Uh, there will be ma more uh, in all history. Uh, there's no war which was not hatched by the governments. Governments alone independent on the interests of the people to whom war is always pernicious, even when successful. Beautiful. So, yeah, I actually had to go back home before this tour so I would be able. So here is uh, the book, Tolstoy, Anna Karenina. Glory, thank you very much for your contribution. I think I missed someone uh, who also made a contribution. Barbara, thank you very much. Also highly uh, appreciated the history. Yeah, I also uh, like it that you can learn about the culture. So last year, I'm going to send you some pictures from last year. It was different. I have a recording and I probably I will post it um, for sponsors only. So uh, probably you know that Hey Go uh, started this initiative, so this way we are able to share, you know, more things, more features. So there are some tours that I won't be able to repeat for the obvious reasons, you know, because it's like a special event or, you know, for some other reasons. So uh, last year will be will be also repeated, but I'm going to tell you. So it's another reference to Russian culture. Or it's this man is called a bogatir, and I'm going to send you a few pictures. The most uh, famous uh, painting of uh, bogatirs, and then also bogatirs in Russian, uh, in a Russian animated movie, or you can say also in a Russian curtain. Well, Bogatur, um, sometimes I say was like a medieval uh, soldier. Well, you can also say a hero in the Russian folk epics known as Bellini, also Slavic legends, uh, Slavic fairy tales. You can compare it to the Western uh, European version of Knight Errant. So he would be like the protector of the country. He appears in Russia around the time of uh, Vladimir, Prince Vladimir. So Prince Vladimir, he was the one who adopted Christianity in Russia in 1988. Yes, in 1988. It's a little bit pre-bogatures, yes, exactly. But here we have one, but we will, uh, probably we will see more because there is, um, again, this year, more focus on Russian folklore, on Russian traditions. Is this one piece of ice, several pieces? No, it's just one piece of ice. In most of the cases, it's just one uh, piece of ice. Uh, okay. Three bogatures, it is the painting, yeah. Uh, let's let's continue. So last year was very different because last year we had kind of like a small space and um, the statues were, were they were together. Uh, this year uh, we have more area, you know, just a, a little bit to walk around from one to another. Another, another, uh, Peter the Great. You see how big it is. And by the way, nearby we have a big uh, statue um, of Peter the Great in this area. I'm going to send you another. He's also um, the founder. And by the way, the statue of Peter the Great is uh, officially is known as uh, 300 years anniversary of Russian fleet. So he was the one who liked Amsterdam, who was 
uh, you know, expanding um, the territories, but also expanding the sea. So there is just so much, you know, to show you. And it's very, it's very different from, you know, the last time. So I hope we will be able, you know, to, um, to cover everything, the nutcracker uh, and Pyotr Tchaikovsky. So if you... Mm, the, the Nutcracker is uh, the number one Christmas ballet in many countries. Well, obviously in Russia and the King Mouse, the antagonist in the ballet. If you want to listen to Russian uh, classical music, highly, highly recommended um, the Nutcracker Tchaikovsky. By the way, some of you know that I've started my YouTube channel. So basically uh, on my YouTube channel, I post um, videos that I'm not able to show you on Hego again, like some special, some, you know, subway stations, some areas where I wouldn't be able to walk around with the camera for a long time or just, you know, some other uh, things that you can just miss on my tour. So uh, one of them, one of them is uh, the light tunnel, the festive tunnel. And I did it like the day and the night and I used the music by Tchaikovsky from the Nutcracker. He has... Mm, he has, um, you know, great, uh, great pieces. I uh, absolutely love it. And uh, this is just uh, something when you say that music can heal. Uh, Tchaikovsky music, I certainly believe that it can heal. So last year we had an um, international festival. Mainly they were, um, you know, former uh, Soviet countries. What about La Lila? Oh, okay. I will answer the question. Lalila, Lalila is another great, uh, it's a friend of mine. We did uh, several concerts together. Uh, so again, we see more references to uh, Russian fairy tales like uh, dragons. And this kind of reminds of the panics, the Russian uh, firebirds. I'm going to show you more. The, Three Horses is also a big reference to uh, Russian culture, to Russian tradition. So speaking of my friend Lalila, who did concerts with me, we did uh, Give Peace a Chance, I think like New Year concerts. Let's get closer. Oh, la la. I think it's beautiful also to take a look. Uh, Give Peace a Chance, like even Norway concerts. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, she had to move to Israel uh, because of the mobilization. She is married, she's with her husband, so that is why we are no longer able to do tours together. But I hope she will become a successful singer in Israel. So here we have a new year. That you, again, there are too many kids, too many people around. She's in Israel, we're um, near Haifa. So it is not uh, sent uh, close, it is Dead Maros. In Russian, Dead Maros, in English, Grandpa Frost. And you see he has bag, uh, the bag full of presents. And, yeah, the guy is also posing for us, the boy is also posing for us. It was so sweet. So, this is just something for New Year. And that is, again, this is the LA. Um, all around we have uh, also uh, actually statues that belong to the museum park there, permanent. And on the background, we have a Tretikov area. So last time when I did this tour for you, for Hego, I wasn't able to go to this area because again, everything was closed. So we were, but look at the ground. Uh, so that is why I think it will be the last tour because uh, the weather keeps being crazy. I think we will go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, so we will just go. The weather is uh, it's really crazy these days in Russia because, uh, you know, it was minus like 25 last week. And then before it was plus six, that's why the festival was over. So now it is minus three as uh, so it's warmer, but then in few days it will be plus five and the festival is only for a month it will be till uh, January 28 so I'm not sure we will be able to repeat it because of the weather conditions and 
of course, I don't know in advance whether the festival will be open or not. So they keep um, closing it. So this is the highlight according to the organizers. And as I mentioned, there are not that many information you can find online about the festival. Uh, it's basically like a press release. Uh, Every website just copies it. And it's it's a pity that it's not a very well promoted, but I can say that there are just so many things happening in uh, Moscow these days. So this is a highlight. It is a castle with, uh, you know, several layers, several rows. Uh, last year, we haven't seen anything like that. You see there is a queue, so you have to wait. Uh, officially, officially on the website, they say it's not only for kids but also for the adults well i mean there are some but it's uh, it's mainly for kids it's it is seems like a lot of fun i agree with you so um that is yeah as i said it, it is the the castle it's called the castle of miracles with five different layers of eyes and slides for kids and adults let's get a little bit closer i'm just going to and what I like about it is that they also have references uh, to Russian culture, Russian traditions. Uh, so we see the cathedrals, the Russian domes, and also here. So it is very beautifully decorated. Well, it's me. I'm going to say hi to you. Yeah, I'm not going to do it in front of you. Is the castle based off anything? No, it's not based on anything. Uh, nothing like... And you see there are so many... Uh, parents waiting for their children but it's very beautiful and nice with uh i think snow and it um it just kind of adds um complete new new atmosphere i took an umbrella as i said just to protect the gimbal and you know we're lucky that the gimbal was shaking in the beginning of the tour but now it's behaving well i i, I sometimes i say he because you know, my gimbal has a personality, has a character. So here again, let's take a look at the castle. And the festival has um, a few sponsors, a few partners. Uh, one of them is a TV channel called Mir, uh, which means peace and also the world. This is a TV channel that uh, broadcasts um, the former Soviet Union countries. And here we have the rabbit, like symbol of the year. Mir, it's written in the middle. Snow in the beam of light was cool for skirt shirt. Yeah, I'm happy. Feel free to... <laughs> is the snow real? It is. The snow is real. I mean, come on, we are in Russia. <laughs> it is. That would be too much snow. No. But, but uh, what I can say, Lynn, um, guys, I've prepared it only for you. This snow is only for you. I've just, I've just organized it. I called the festival or uh, organizers, the managers, and I was like, you know what? We're going to have a very special tour for Hago. So that's why, okay, I was waiting for the moment just for you to take a postcard. But as I said, um, there are just so, so many people today. And that's why, you know, why so many people? Because again, the festival was closed and apparently it will be closed uh, maybe even tomorrow. Because it, tomorrow it will be approximately like zero degrees and then it will be warmer and warmer so we don't know uh and today is uh saturday so it makes sense that many many uh people came here to spend the holidays yeah i love it and again i love that you know we also have some very good views with the snow so i'm going to leave this area because we have more more things to see michael thank you very much for your contribution as warm as my fridge yeah i mean it takes i mean as i as i often say sometimes uh, it might seem that i'm just walking around with the camera but no i really need um even like special clothes uh to walk around uh in this cold weather so this is another kind of like fans on <laughs> just for you to uh take a picture of postcard uh i would show you my face like in there uh, for a poor scar, but unfortunately again too many people so let's go to one of the i'd say also most interesting zones uh, we have two bears at the entrance and as you might know the bear is the national animal of russia and the bear is our friend so many russian 
fairy tales, many stories would be about bears and he has a hammer in his hands. I guess <clears throat> it is a reference to the festival that you can carve your own statues. So this is like the creative zone. Uh, what does it mean to sponsor in the guide? What means that sponsoring the guide is like you have a subscription, a monthly subscription. By the way, starting from this month, uh, he go takes uh, um, only change 25 percent before like for other contributions it's uh, 40 percent but again it all goes to support the platform uh so um, every tour guide offers either like special tours for uh, sponsors or they uh, offer i don't know like additional materials in my case i share uh, presentations or tours like big presentations up to like 100 slides uh, that was the presentation for the graffiti mall i also share um old videos like recorded tours and this month i'm going to have the first ever tour only for sponsors uh it will be about a uh, youtube in russia so that's where i'm going to talk about you know some brave Russian journalists um, and uh, yeah the tour will not be re repeated and the tour will not be presented for a big audience for some obvious reasons just because it's um, not an easy topic to talk about not finding anything about the sponsorship on the website um, I don't know if it, it is the information on the website maybe he go post it on on Facebook group but I guess you can just press something on my page or any tour guides page uh, <clears throat> and then probably there will be the information or you can co uh, contact the Higo support yeah it is surprising that they're not promoting it but it's uh, kind of like a new thing a new feature so they're still testing it um hopefully we will be able to uh okay so thank you everyone for sharing um okay so what do you think do we have any uh, legends do we have uh, any experts <laughs> any big artists <laughs> who's going to be a big one so supposedly um, this is also the area where we have like master classes workshops I think it is uh, <laughs> the number one area for kids uh, for some I believe it can be even more fun than slides uh, last time when we did a tour there were some who were creating like ice figures but it is much more difficult they even have some special equipment like some special knives that you can get uh from the organizers like you can there are some adults who are also making you see the the lady she's using a knife there's a sponsor but thank you very much everyone thanks for um, your help and for your support oh there is one piece of ice in there so which is uh, lovely so let's go from this area what does the writing on the blue square mean uh the writing on the blue square we um talked about it in the beginning of the tour it is uh the <clears throat> the name of the festival snow and ice that's how it sounds in russian english it sounds like the ice and snow festival in moscow so we're there oh look do you believe that this is the boy who made it <laughs> this looks very impressive Oh my God, here is the champion. I believe I said to be some high quality. Of course, of course, of course. Mm. Again, as I said, unfortunately, uh, there is not much information about the festival uh, anywhere, like even in Russian, in English. If you Google it, if you write Ice and Snow Festival Moscow, um, apparently the only thing you can find is, uh, is my hey go tour that's it for this year if you if you're right 2023 last year <clears throat> there was some coverage uh, i would say like the, um, the, the from from other sources not that much probably like the moscow times english media in moscow but uh, this year it is it is exclusive the english version only uh, for hey go voyagers caroline thank you very much for your contribution so um around the place we have some cafes like to warm up and here's a big question like how will you survive how will you survive when it's very cold and as i said it might be like 
minus 25, minus 26. And it's not only about the temperature, but it's also about the wind. So <clears throat> drink tea, <laughs> that's my recommendation. Some Russians would say drink vodka. I'm not sure uh, it will, it's a good solution. I prefer tea, so that's something that I would recommend you just you know to stay longer so now we are going to a different area and let meanwhile i'm going to send you a photo from the previous year so as i said it was an international festival <clears throat> there were even some teams so basically last year in gorky park they uh, even had teams coming from uh, various countries uh, there was even from a team from finland and they had a collaboration with disney uh, so they had some like Disney figures and that is, uh, th that is the kind of pictures that you can find online. Oh, I don't my recording. <laughs> oh, some are falling down. They're all, so many references, of course, to New Year, to, uh, the, to the, the time of the year, to the holidays, the train. This kind of reminds me of Harry Potter, isn't it? Um, no, we don't have any kind of like famous trains in Seb or like Trans-Siberian. Uh, but as I said, if last year was uh, kind of like international e Disney, so this year they focused more on um, Russian traditions, um, on Russian handicrafts, on Russian uh, fairy tales. So that was... Are there any Muscovites that are still suspicious after this many years? Or so, so, someone walking around with the... Uh, of course, of course. I mean, if you join my tourist, there is... Uh, everything happens i mean not 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 very often i would say that moscow is very different from other russian cities uh so if i would go to a small town uh i'm not sure how many, many min minutes it would take me for for me to be beaten like even <clears throat> a small town near moscow i don't know we could you know bet we could play a game <clears throat> in moscow there was a parent uh i would say on my tour is probably only one time when a man yelled at me uh, but it's, it's also about the like touristy places so many people are very suspicious when I do tours like everyday life in Moscow the tour that I'm going to do uh, tomorrow so <clears throat> because when you walk in a like non-touristy area it is surprising but uh, what I like also to show on my tours that often when I speak English and I show young people, many young people are very friendly, very welcoming. And I guess some of you who have joined my tours have seen that, uh, you know, they even try to say a few words in English. Uh, some of them did. So I also, you know, want to show the other side of Russia, something that is different, you know, from the media. Uh, so... This is a reference to Soviet art, so Soviet monumentalism, and that is what the park is about. So here we have many uh, statues. That is the reference to St. George. Uh, St. George uh, considered as the protector of Moscow, and that is also the, <clears throat> the coat of arms of Moscow. The, on the, he's also on the flag of Moscow. This one, uh, I think, has suffered a little bit from the weather conditions so we're going to the other area so it's not only uh the festivals the heroes from fairy tales but also in here we uh, will see some famous uh, buildings from uh, the architecture as i said last year everything was like a written this year uh you may you have to guess like i this uh this is again the reference to, you know, Soviet monumentalism in the Soviet Union. It was very often to, it was very important to show uh, like strong people, even women were kind of like masculine if you uh, look at the statues. So we will take a look at the castle. We'll go through another alley. So this alley where we are is a lot about, you know, uh, Russian traditions this one is uh saint basil's cathedral i guess some of you have seen it on my tours or on my colleagues tours the, this beautiful colorful church one one of the most beautiful cathedrals in the world it's uh, in uh in red square in the moscow city center i do tours like the best of moscow the highlights of moscow uh, <clears throat> 
Donetsk, where in Soviet times, British Moscow, that's where we are able to see the cathedral. And actually, I'm going to show the cathedral. I'm going to cover it. I'm going to show the cathedral um, in kind of like in the lights this uh, next week. So next week it will be kind of like special, uh, special Kiev's Sky tour, my new tour. Another bear. So you can see bear is very big for uh, James. Thank you very much for your contribution. Highly appreciated. So another bear playing here for you and this uh, festival. Last year we also had more mm, more figures made out at slow. Yeah, it's very challenging in terms of the weather, you know, to keep the festival. So I'm happy that they still have it like this year because I wasn't sure they would they, that they would organize it. Uh, for those of you who are interested, like in Soviet past, uh, would like to know more. And I know some of you asked me many questions. So that is one of the most notorious figures in our history, Felix Dzerzhinsky, known as the Iron Felix, the founder of KGB. So that's uh, what I talk about on my uh, on my museum tour of the Soviet past. Uh, still, we have some, you know, snow figures. Last year, there was like an area for a snowman and I'm going to show you and there was also the area for like celebrities famous russians they would bring their dogs and and they had area with their dogs i'm going to show you some lovely matryoshkas or babushkas in english or russian dolls and nesting dolls uh whatever <laughs> you call them uh very lovely and beautiful Matryoshka, you see people are saying Matryoshka. And meanwhile, I'm, I'll go through your comments. Um, this is, thank you very much, Linda. How long does this culture stay typically? Tina, it depends on the weather. We don't know. Um, again, I mentioned it in the beginning of the festival that it was opened on December 28th. And then the festival was over in three days. So they had to remake it. Um, those of you who joined the festival last week uh, probably remember that everything was covered. And uh, we were watching the process, how they were like remaking the statues. I wasn't even able to show like with some of the statues. It was kind of funny because I was getting close and I was trying to guess what was in front of me. And I'm like, Seems like Tolstoy should be Tolstoy. I read there was Tolstoy, but again, it was just so unclear because it was just half of the statue, which is just also interesting to see um, all the sides of the festival. Uh, so, yeah, I'm lucky that I'm able to do this tour at least once for you. Um, and again, we never know whether this will be... Um, any other time will next year. It was an annual festival and they organized it um, in Luzhniki Stadium in Goriki Park. Uh, so every year it's a new place, new location. So another bear just building a town with the Russian uh, blacksmith. So this area, this big area is devoted to bogatiers. So again, no information about festival or anything. There's only the information about the roads. You should behave well. So. Let's remember. Uh, so those of you who joined uh, later, I'm going to send you more pictures about Bogatures. Yep, yeah, this is. And uh, with Bogatures, we also have uh, the tunnel. Uh, not the tunnel, sorry, the maze. It's called Labyrinth in Russian. And in the middle, we have another yeah, I'm, it's a little bit difficult to navigate through. And in the middle, we have the Borgator. So this year, the... Okay, um, this year, the biggest Borgator should be like seven meters. And there is more of the tunnel. Another fun thing to do for children. Thanks, Tony, for sharing this beautiful exhibition. Like, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you for appreciating my work. I mean, it's... um. Not easy, you know, to, as I mentioned, to organize the festival because you don't know, um, I, I also don't know about the weather. And it's not nice, you know, to cancel tours. Okay, hope you can hear me well. There's just too many people. 
we see the backside of the bear. <clears throat> yeah, because you never know whether it will actually happen or not. And uh, also, it's not very financially sustainable to uh, organize a tour one day, you know, in advance. So I'm happy that uh, so many of you were able to join the tour. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, highly appreciated. So here we have, uh, it's kind of like a dance, looks like a dance of uh, Russian ladies. And again, kids are everywhere. Uh, why wouldn't they? Of course, they have to be uh, everywhere. And uh, at the top, they have kokoshnik. It's a traditional Russian headdress. Uh, I mentioned it on some other tours where I talk about like Russian um, architecture, that we have similar elements, many, many arches in Russian uh, architecture. And here is another kokoshnik. It's not very practical, though, you know, to have this kokoshnik at the top. <laughs> the boy is so happy. Too many beautiful girls. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So... Uh, yeah, this year, so, well, actually, previous years, no figures were not that big and they're not that popular. So we have to go through uh, this LA and then we will end up seeing another area with um, some of the main attractions of Moscow, some of the highlights of the city. Uh, on the left side, we have some beautiful statues uh, from Museum Park. If you just join the tour, I will repeat, I mean, the Museum Park, uh, it is a very unique and special place. Uh, it's an open air museum with uh, approximately uh, 600 statues in one place. So it is very um, lovely, beautiful. We talked about it again on special tour in museum these days <laughs> and in the, the year in this tour i try to focus you know on some specials things i won't be able to show you uh in the future but uh, i think it's it's kind of like a spoiler for the tour if you decide to go so we're going to the embank embankment so moscow river and uh the park in general has many like beautiful decorations for 2023 and Moscow is, um, I would say, one of the most beautiful decorated cities even this year. That's why many Russians hate us. Seriously, they, th they think that, oh, you you have everything, we have nothing. And if, <clears throat> and it, 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 it honestly, it makes sense. But of course, it's uh, all around the world with the capitals. There's... But in Russia, uh, there is much more things concentrated in Moscow. Remember I mentioned Peter the Great and the one of the biggest statues in Moscow. So it is nearly 100 meters over there. So people say Peter the Great, the official name, 300 years anniversary of Russian fleet was um, created in the late 90s. And... Uh, also quite impressive all older uh, many Moscovites would say oh no it doesn't fit the city it looks very different from everything else that we have so no way yeah I mean the area is pretty big so sometimes uh, we have some areas without the festival over there you see the cathedral oh the Christ the Savior or the Christ the Savior Cathedral I have a tour around this cathedral so if you're interested it's the main uh, cathedral in moscow and also in russia that one with a golden dome uh feel free to uh join this tour and let me show you the statue of course it would be easier to show it if it wasn't that dark but again we have another tour for it so let's uh go it will be actually the last area so it's been all, almost an hour, so I'm going to show you the last area, as I said, with the main attractions. And then I guess we will wrap up the tour. I will answer your questions uh, and I probably can show you some beautiful decorations in the park. So let me see if I miss any questions. 
Uh, thank you very much, Diane, Hadrian. Thank you very much for your support. It's amazing to be able to such a wonderful event. Yeah, thank you very much. And you know what? <laughs> I mean, it's kind of obvious that today uh, it is very difficult to visit Moscow and Russia in general. So it is. It is. I'm. I'm happy that I'm able to continue doing these tours because, um, well, because you know. Since uh, with the world and all of this uh, challenges that we have. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Larry. Thank you for a new sponsorship. They look like candles. Chris, Julie, thank you for your contribution. Uh, what's the new tour you mentioned? Can see. Oh, it's um, Kievsko special. I think it will be next Friday. I have so many tours with Hey Go these days. So I don't remember. So Kiev is special. Kiev is the capital of Ukraine. So it's actually the area that is re devoted to the reunion between Russia and Ukraine. And I had to write a note, like, <laughs> please note, the tour won't be about politics, but it's more about, you know, good old times, friendship, and a uh, beautiful area, beautiful architecture. So there we have I am um, three Kiev's subway stations, also among the most beautiful subway stations. And there we have a uh, Kiev's railway terminal. So in front of the terminal, we have some uh, be very beautiful decorations, uh, including a uh, festive St. Basil's Cathedral. So let's go. And you see on the left, we also have some New Year decorations in front of us. In front of us, that building uh, is Tretikov Gallery, the largest gallery of uh, Russian art in Moscow, but this building covers only uh, the 20th century, the art of the 20th century. And they have some great works of uh, Kandinsky, Malevich. We can see Malevich on the backside. So really something uh, also interesting to talk about. So Ice Moscow, that's what it's written in your family. Museum tour learning to love Moscow. Thank you very much, Christina. Yeah. Okay. Do you recognize the building? I know that not everyone have joined many of my tours, so uh, my colleagues' tours, Anna's tours, but this is also one of the highlights of Moscow, one of the main attractions. The museum tour. I don't have the museum tour, so it's the Kievska. This is the new tour. Uh, Cynthia, Carla, thank you for your contributions. What's the name of the gallery? Tretikov Gallery. In English, Tretikov, it's uh, the surname or the last name of the founder, uh, Pavel Tretikov. So that's why it's called Tretikov. James Lee, thank you for your contribution. Bolshoi, we have another winner, Satyam. Congratulations. Yeah, it's Bolshoi. Bolshoi actually means big. It is the Bolshoi Theater, one of the main theaters, not only in Moscow, but also in the world. If you want to see the real one, you can enjoy the highlights of Moscow tour part two. That's uh, where I talk about the Bolshe Theater. It was um, opened in uh, the 18th century and it is a good representation of the classical architecture in Moscow. Well, so nice with the snow, right? To see and people are <laughs> hugging uh, the boat, guys. But uh, you see, we have a lot more the castle, another castle, kind of this one uh, looks or And you know, you can just sit in here. I don't know how, for how long you could sit in here. Uh, this one looks like the um, Kremlin, but actually we have several Kremlins uh, in Russia. This I um, must be the Kremlin in Moscow because of the clock. A little bit different, you know, than the real one, but nevertheless, uh, this is uh, also a nice way to show uh, another landmark of Moscow, another great attraction. So the Kremlin is the fortress. It's actually uh, the oldest area. This was Moscow, the size of Moscow, and was a fortification and meant to protect the city. You see, I learn a lot from your tourists and becoming dangerous. Uh, thank you, James. Thank you. Well, yeah, let me... It's actually, yeah, to know... A lot about Russia. People might start thinking that you work for KGB James. And everyone, I apologize for the job. Uh, but you know that um, 
and we see the man who is a um, doppelganger of uh, Prince Harry. He started complaining that he it might be dangerous for him, so he would be attacked by Talibs or by like some other organizations. So that is just me saying, be careful. People might think you work for KGB. Again, it's a joke. Uh, yeah, very beautiful. So this one uh, with the star at the uh, clock, this is the Spaska Tower. Again, if you want to see the real one, I also have several tours. Uh, of course, all of these tours, like with the highlights, it would be the highlights of Moscow, the best of Moscow, because this is certainly the main attraction. And I think it's a good way for kids to learn about it, like because this is just... Um, well, listening lectures about architecture is not something that you uh, normally enjoy as a kid. Uh, it's a little bit forest, at least that's how it is in Russia. But, you know, coming here to Ice and Snow Festival and you would be like, oh, so much fun. Uh, that is another... That is another... So I actually like, but, you know, the, there was a question, TAS, it's like rare tours in Russia. This is the biggest news agency. I like the, you know, the questions about um, whether people care about me speaking English. It seems like nobody cares, and I love it. I, and I think one of the reasons is just because people are having so much fun. And there is uh, another sponsor. It's the radio, Russian Heat, and they have a snowman. Oh, my God. Too many people, a little, little bit difficult. So let's... Uh, see more of the Kremlin. I'm going to uh, do a uh, portrait mode for you. So you can take a postcard and then you can compare it to the real one. This reminds me of how good of the ice festival. Uh, do people usually stay outdoors when it snows because of the... Oh yeah, sure. You know, I wore it in France and it was just uh, a little bit crazy for me to see that they closed the school where I work, it was near Marseille, they closed the school just because of the rain, and I was like, seriously, in Russia, we go to school even when it's like minus 30, uh, when it's below 30, we don't go to school, so that is just the way it is, no, 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 it's, it's absolutely normal, but, you know, um, Moscow, I mean, the conditions are not that severe if you compare it to other cities, I actually found an interesting girl on YouTube, again, just a reminder if you want to watch more of my videos so if you want to support me i know that uh for some reasons uh for people uh not everyone is able to make a contributions on a not on every tour but there are always ways to support a uh, tour guide so you can write a nice review for us uh, you know to support our work and and also support my YouTube channel uh, to see more. So I was, I uh, wanted to mention, uh, I love YouTube in general. So that's why I've started with YouTube and, you know, not other uh, social um, media. So she she has a great channel about Yakutsk. It's in Russian and in English. And Yakutsk is considered to be among the coldest cities in the world. If not the coldest, uh, the weather in there is up to... Uh, minus 50 degrees and she has interesting videos where she talks about the conditions it's it's really nice and she's also very um, lovely i think you can just write yakutska on youtube and then you will find her if not then ask me and i will uh, post a video so another symbol of the year instead of russian heat there is a russian cold uh you know but but i mean what people say this is just an expression but we have warm hearts that's what people say oh i like this song it's dima bilan you know we've seen actually dima bilan in one of my tours uh i don't know if you can hear the music but i love it dima bilan he is the only winner in uh, eurovision from russia and on one of my tours with hey go we had a concert dima's bilan concert and i'm really proud he's one of my favorite russian musicians yeah let's listen to it a little bit. I would just he's he's very nice and professional. Yeah, he has the music. Yeah, it's a, like pop, but I just I just don't like like Russian pop music. So Dima, he's the only one. Hold, hold. Okay, uh six star, thank you very much, Dorley. Thank you. Uh 
I'm always happy. As you know, usually it's not that easy to attract viewers uh, to Moscow. So this tour became actually one of the most visited tours of mine uh, in the last year. So I'm, re I'm really happy that so many of you were able to see. And another highlight at the end of the tour. Remember we've seen St. Basil's Cathedral, which was kind of like, you know, very small one. So here's another one, the bigger one, which it looks very, very beautiful and impressive. So as I say, with the real one, it's always beautiful. It's no matter when you look at it, whether it's uh, dark, whether it's in the morning or in the evening, um, it doesn't matter from what angle. It's, it's absolutely stunning. It's very unique. And even though you might find like an architectural style and line. So again, I'll do a portrait mode. Just will be, go sit down and then I will do a portrait mode for you. Oh, Dima Bilan, he's, he's still with us. Dirji, Dirji, hold my hand. He's amazing. He's really good. The guy, he's a very good professional. Okay. <laughs> no wonder he's the only Russian winner in the Eurovision. So St. Basil's Cathedral, uh, what I was saying about the architecture, it is really unique. Even though you might find like uh, style, there is nothing like it except for the cathedral on the spilled blood in St. Petersburg, but it was inspired by St. Basil's Cathedral. If you haven't seen it, uh, if you don't know how the real one looks like, uh, please uh, take your time, Google. It's really beautiful, very uh, nice, colorful church. Some some people compare it, I don't know, to a wedding cake. Others compare it to Disneyland. There are so many associations, but it's it's really nice to look at it, and I think it's very beautiful. So, what else do we have? We have a place for the king. <laughs> oh, the snow lady, the snow king. <laughs> So there is another uh, another place that I wouldn't be able uh, to show you with my face just because so, so many people want to take a picture. But again, I'm happy. And this is something, you know, as the Russian specialty, this is what I wrote also in the tour description, that winter is one of the best times to explore Russia because uh, that's what we are known for. Oh, let me go up. It seems like it's easier. Older, oh no, I won't be able to go up because we have uh, men who work for the festival. Okay, so that was everything that I wanted to share with you. We actually have seen everything at the festival. So what I'm going to do now, I'll just show you some uh, other attractions. So we are looking now, we are looking at the Kremlin from the other side. It's also nice and beautiful. So, uh, I'll go through your comments in the chat and we will go back to the entrance of the festival. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact me, to ask me. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, this will be, this will be the end, the end of our tour. Uh, okay. James, Louis, thank you very much for your contributions. Uh, Jenna, thank you for your support. Reminds me. Okay. Instead of, yeah, I already answered. How do these parents get the kids to sit still? Or I don't know, actually last time, this is uh, the place where you you can buy paintings, but it's over around 5, which is quite early. Now it's 6, uh, 7 p.m. Uh, yeah, actually, last time uh, there was an announcement that the boy was lost at the festival. It's just it's actually pretty easy to lose your kid because there are just so many kids. They see one thing, you know, they just run and jump. Um, but, you know, they, they also have a lot of stuff are working for the festival. So... So it should be should be fine. Uh, thank you, Tina. Thank you, Nicoletta, Sandy, for your support. Okay, so no more 
questions, then um, I, as I promised, I'm just going to show you some uh, more beautiful decorations. You know, I I don't know, uh, yesterday I did a tour for one hour, 20 minutes, that was a premiere. Today, it's another sort of like a premiere. Mm, it was longer than I planned, but I hope you don't mind, because again, not sure we will be able to repeat it. If we will, uh, probably it will be the last minute tour. Um, but who knows? Let's hope for the best. And I didn't even expect that we would be able to do the tour again. When I just came here last time, there was not much to see. Okay, here are some beautiful decorations uh, of the tour. So I'll just get closer for you to take pictures. Okay. Yeah, there. So, Vicky, thank you very much for your contribution. Christina, thank you. Sandy, thank you. Uh, okay, so is there no questions in the chat? So, thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the tour. I hope you enjoyed seeing the festival in Moscow. I'll be happy to see you on my tours. Um, tomorrow I have everyday life in Moscow, so that's where I show around my area. That's where I show around my area, uh, which will be very different, <laughs> not a very postcardable tour. Uh, but in any case, uh, always happy to see you. Uh, thank you very much again for joining me. Have a wonderful weekend. Have a great week and see you soon. Пока, пока. That's bye-bye uh, in Russian. Thank <laughs> you.